Hi, this is Hakan Bean, and today we are going to tumble. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea if this is actually going to work out. So let's get right into this. Whoa! Just remember that I have my very own, own skeleton under all this flesh! Not for long. My goodness. Oh, this is going to be fun story to read. Bad stories time! The shoe incident! So in high school, my best friend was allowed to go on dates. Wasn't allowed to go on dates unless there was, was another couple there to keep an eye on, on him. Part of this was his parents being insane, but also part of it was him being insane. And a problem with no reasonable part, ladies, there are no reasonable solutions. At some point in my junior year, my sort of GF broke up with me, and I wasn't feeling in dating, which was bad for my friend because he had a good thing going with a girl he met in court. In court? He kind of hounded me about it, kept pushing me to just, kept pushing me to just put my feet back in a dating pool, and I wasn't real thrilled about it, because I knew he was pushing me for his own benefit, not mine. So I kept telling him to freak off. And after a few weeks of being told that I would date when I was dang well ready, he eventually said, Okay, what if I paid for the date and found you a blind date, and all you had to do was show up? And I sure have said no. I know. But I let him wear me down. And I, I will own my faults in that. A date starting on such a stupid premise could never have gone well. But he still managed to find a way to make it worse. I don't know how he, long he tried to have a blind date it up. It couldn't have, have been multiple old, old attempts. He could have sued to this immediately. But what happened in the end was that he called a girl from the ward he attended. A girl that he knew had a giant mushy crush on him. And he said, hey, how would you feel about going on a date this weekend? You know... Implying it was him, but never actually saying it. And she said, yes, wow, I would love to. And he said, great. And he called me up and he and said he found me a date. I did not learn about his crimes until several weeks later. I will die, I swear, before God Almighty, that I would never have allowed this Travis SC to happen if I had known. That was on a Monday. The date of the date rolled around that Friday evening. I'm sorry to confess, I really phoned the whole thing in. I showed up in my favorite comfy outfit, which is also a fashion crime. Basketball shorts and flip-flops and a Baja a hoodie. It was super comfy, but it made me look kind of crazy. I picked him up first, and then I picked up his date next. And we went up and to pick up my date. And that's where you're going to get the play-by-play. -play. Oh no. I arrived, walked across the yard, and knocked on the front door. She opened it almost immediately, like she'd been waiting right by it. And I could just see her expression go from, Oh gee, I'm so excited, to super disappointed. Then disgusted, and finally, his. And because I didn't know about my friend's sense, I thought it was my outfit, which seemed harsh. Like, hey, I'm allowed to be e quirky. Fuck you. Also, it's a blind date. Oh, I actually swore. I thought the deal was that we were are both going to be set at broken sacks of mortality. Anyway, we looked at each other for several seconds before she slammed the door in my face. I looked back at my friend. He was sweating bullets. I don't know what he expected from this, 
But there was this lo big long pause where we both tried to figure out what to do, and then the door opened and up, and her dad invited me in, and he said and she was going to need a few minutes to finish getting ready. And that in the meantime, we could sit and talk. We did not talk. We did sit. I sat down on the couch, and he sat down on a chair across the couch. And then instead of talking, he cleaned his pistol on the coffee table. I wasn't actually sure if it was a threat or if I, if it was just a fidget thing for 40 plus year old Republican men. But when I tried to help, he got snappy, so I just watched him put a pistol back together. He was okay at it. Eventually, my day came downstairs, still mad as hell for a reason and beyond my can, and I felt pretty guilty for being such a mess because I thought that was why she was ang so angry. But I tried to make up for or by walking her to the car and getting the door for her, just generally trying to be extra polite. Before I could make it back to the driver's side, her dad called me back to the door, so I flipped around, went to the door, and immediately regretted my decision. Soon as I was within range, her, her dad got way too close to me. I leaned in and uh, her dad got way too close to me. He leaned in and said, "Whatever you do to her, I will do to you." And my brain went into overdrive, making three consecutive realizations. Realization was unwise. Damn, the pistol thing was a threat. That sucks. What a jerk. Realization two was wait. I'm autistic, and even I know there's a 0% chance, and it's me and my, I date and even hold hands. Least of, of all, anything else. Does this guy actually think there's a 1% chance of anyone in that car are, are, are kissing tonight? Is he an idiot? And I realized an, a, realization 3 went through with me. Which was, wait, is this guy threatening to <laughs> screw me? And unfortunately, with my brain doing so much processing, my mouth went as left to run amok. So, sorry between in realization two and three, I said, oh no. Where I wasn't actually trying to be as e e smart, it was just me pointing out that he couldn't actually follow up on that threat. It just wasn't possible. We do not live in the Omega verse, and I'm not scared of you. So it was an insanely catastrophic thing to say. Like, what did you say? Hang on, did I miss it? I said, Oh, I can't get pregnant. <laughs> you get pregnant from holding hands. That's totally how it works. Which I swear wasn't me trying to be smart. It was just me pointing out that he couldn't actually follow up on that threat. It just wasn't possible. We do not live in the Omegaverse, and I'm not scared of you. Still, it was an insanely catastrophic thing to say, and the moment we both heard it, we, we blue screen. That single sentence obliterated, obliterated both of our auditory streams of consciousness like a satellite in front of a sand blaster. Grandma was, he'd probably gone his whole life not even realizing someone could say something in that and stupid, and making that realization was going to cost him a lot of thinking in time. Me though? I had been saying that stuff for, for 17 in years. I didn't have to rewrite my expectations of human nature. I just had to play an exit and start striding. So I was already halfway back to the car before I heard, Hey! Hey! Come back! Hey! Hey! Hey, wait! Hey, get back here! Hey! And then I was in my car, and I drove away. If this happened to a day, he'd have called her, and this whole thing would have imploded then and there. But back then, there were still a decent number of teenagers without cell phones. Especially the teenagers of insane, gun-toting parents. So she just said, Whoa, what was, is that all about? And I said, 
Don't worry about it. He'll tell you about it when you get home. <laughs> I hope he did. That'd be hilarious. That's a hilarious story right there. <laughs> I just said, okay, I went back to staring daggers at me and my friend. Which, surprisingly, isn't even how the story ends. We went to an improv comedy show, and it was a disaster. It's driven like 7 out of 10 tops, but between my date being mad, and my friend having a good time, and me having the existential or terror of knowing that a guy with a pistol was probably waiting outside his, his house for me to come back, it was a, easily 11 out of 10. Really? I laughed way too hard at everything, especially the jokes that flopped. I'd sit there in the most exciting room and laugh until I dry heaved a little. And my day was absolutely disgusted, even my friend was a little embarrassed. Which I would which would just make me laugh harder. I laughed so hard that night I could barely talk the next day. And then the show ended and my friend said You know, that was a good time, but I think we should do something a little chiller. Who wants to walk around the park? And it said, it said, yeah. And my dad said, no. And I finally had mercy on that on a poor woman. So I said, look, I'm going to drop you all off. And I am so, so sorry about this. But I'm dropping you off. Like a super weird way. Super duper sorry. I'm not uh, uh, full screening this. Is, I'm sorry, we have way too much Templar to scroll through still. Do talk to your dad about the pistols thing if you don't want this happening more in the future, though. She said, okay, so I dropped her off and she walked to block down, and that was that. And then I drove my friend and his date to a park that was good for a wandering. I figured they wanted something more private, so instead of following them around point blank, I chose a park with this 30-foot rope tower, and I climbed to the top, and I said, hey... I can see you anywhere from up here. You're officially chaperoned from a distance. Get pen up, pen up, up to con, idiot. So my friend really is an idiot. And he really didn't get the whole, now I don't, I don't have the third wheel so I'll insane me hard with you guys thing. So he climbed up the tower too, and then, this, and then his date followed behind him. So there are three people basically sitting together on the top of a telephone pole. And then they started making out. I was close enough to hear it. I didn't know. I didn't really know what to do, so I was just kind of sitting there, dissociating. When some college kids came around and started shaking the tower, my friend state went, oh, "I'm afraid of heights." My friend went on, "Don't worry, I'll hold you tight." And I went, "Hey, I'm gonna climb down and ask them to stop." Why the heck are they shaking a tower? I guess people do some really weird things sometimes. So I did climb down, and I did ask them to stop. And they flipped me off, which I wasn't even mad about. Uh, out. At that point, I was like, yeah, it would be weirder or if this wasn't a mess. God's plan has been into flight is, say, like a 747. It's my metaphorical... Wow. And brother, he is close enough for me to see him... Grinning through the cockpit windows. Still, eventually, the college students got bored, so they climbed up the tower, which gave my friend and his date a window to climb down. And together, we walked back to my car. Now, I can't explain this, but sitting back in the driver's seat was my uh, carriage back into a pumpkin moment. I've been chill about all the chaos, just rolling with the punches, but sitting down, I realized how much of a crap show that they had been. And while I couldn't go back and fix all of it, I go back and fix one thing. So I told my friend and his date, hey, you two, stay here and don't do anything weird. Don't. Then I walked back to the rope tower and I started picking up the shoes the college kid, the college had left at the at base in order to climb. But halfway through this, I realized that if I took all their shoes, they might think I was in, in it for the money. And I actually wanted them to, them to know I was in specifically to spite them. Heck, those guys. So I put all the right shoes back. Give myself a hundred foot head sock. I, and yelled. Okay, I do have to. Wow. 
Please don't be a slur. And yelled, nice shoes, jerks. The little jig and started running. Okay, thank goodness. I just got like super nervous about that. My advice to everyone is that college students are faster than you think, even with the head start. And the whole climb down the tower thing, I was still only five seconds ahead of them by the time I got to my car. I flung my door open, looked in the back seat, didn't see anyone, flung these stolen shoes in the back seat, and there were two owls that took that as proof of presence, jumped in, and peeled out of the lot. My friend and his date popped up a few seconds later. They were uh, doing something weird in the back seat. My one request obliterated. They climbed up to ask where the hell all their shoes I come from, and I was like, yeah, I sold it from the college students. They were like, oh, cool, hope you had fun. I was like, I did, I did. But speaking of fun, what were you doing back there? And the first time in my vice life, I think he was actually embarrassed. Your tags make this even funnier. <laughs> Obsessed with the dad's perspective in this situation. Your daughter is super excited for her date. She goes to the door. It's some um, MF or dressed like some under, like Sans Undertale. Your daughter slams the door, extremely upset. She yells something about getting ready and storms upstairs. So your oil brain has been poisoned by lead. That's when poisoned by lead immediately turns to murderous rage. You invite Sans up and G inside. Do your threat routine. They freaking help you clean the gun. Excuse me, what the heck? Daughter comes back down. She's still oh, oh, upset. Megalomaniac is acting chill and oblivious. Try something else. Channel Puritan Rage and throw use of emotional repression. Whatever you do to her, I do to you. I can't get pregnant. Proceeds to kidnap daughter. End scene. Phenomenal OP. I'm sorry that that I threatened you though. That's messed up. Oh yeah, the dad was absolutely one of those, um, I think that they're called girl dads, so those dads are weirdly possessive of, of their daughters. Happens a lot. Alright, we are going to open this in new tabs because I want to know what the heck I'm reading. <laughs> We aren't reading it yet because we don't know what's next. <sighs> we aren't supposed to really talk about this stuff before um, Halloween happens, so why the heck are we talking about Christmas already? It's August. We should be talking about Halloween. Okay, let's get it. It 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 this it's red. Anyway, they really hate being called weird, huh? I mean, like I've been called weird my whole life, and pretty much immediately started owning it, and I'm much more. Or the makes art from discarded items weird, unless the show us your or bits weird. They use it like a slur. <laughs> Years ago, I what I casually mentioned that I'm weird to my pro Trump dad and his wife, and they got baffling, baff, afflingly offended, insisted that I'm not weird. Being abnormal is the worst thing to those people because they've always won on it to have a death sentence. It's kind of funny to see them use it like that because I've seen weird as a point of pride for like 30 
because I've been weird as a point of pride for like 30 years. Essentially, you can't call us that. That's our word for making fun of you. Elon acting like actually calling it a slur and is trying to prevent people on Twitter from using it. Like, y'all want to be oppressed so bad. I love how benign it is. You could call someone a fascist for years and they don't even blink. But call them weird. Love it. Oh yeah, they are. They absolutely despise anything and not like them. Fascist's goal is to become mainstream and normal. In his book, The Authoritarians, Bob Al Altemeyer found that people who scored high on an authoritarian scale would say that they, they would want to be around the middle of the scale. Oh. Oh, while medium and low authoritarians will say they would like to be low on the scale. Altamire notes that when asked, high authoritarians tend to rank being normal as one of the best things a person could be. This is why when you call them a fascist, they can brush it off like it's nothing. But when you call them weird, it hurts so bad. The thing they want the most is to be normal. They want their bigotry, their hatred, their violence to be normal. And it is vital that we do not allow that. They are not normal. They will never be normal. And we will make sure that they are, they are not normal. Always push back on their ideas. Call them on how weird they are and organize against them to make sure they stay weird. Yeah, being, yeah um, if you're big, then you're pretty weird. Little known fact, in 1994, Mariah Carey released her album, Merry Christmas, which featured the holiday a classic, All I Want for Christmas is You. Why are we talking about this in August? You should have waited at least two months. No, actually, until November. Why are you doing this early? <sighs> this album marked a huge change in the way people celebrate Christmas. Due to the fear of communism during the Cold War, the color red had entirely been banned in the US. This directly affected Christmas. People did not celebrate the holiday in fear that they would be branded communists and immediately arrested. But then came Mariah. She decided the people had had enough of the oppressive U.S. government. And made an entire Christmas album in rebellion. She even went as far as to wear a daringly red Santa Claus suit on the album cover. Many lawsuits came her way and she was jailed for a brief period. But the public outcry was so large that the CIA had no option but let her go. A few days later, Congress lifted the ban on the color red and the holiday spirit was restored. Now we all celebrate Christmas freely thanks to Mariah Carey. Yes, but we shouldn't be playing one song for, or 24-7 as soon as November 1st hits. I will still be mad about that. There are so many Christmas songs, I do not know why this one in particular, All I Want For Christmas Is You, is the only song anyone ever plays in their stores. Hmm. This version of the e progress flag looks Legitimately looks so nice. Oh yeah, I do actually really like that. It's got the intersect circle all around the, the um, triangle bit. Yeah, that's great. That's a that's a good look. Gilbert Baker rainbow, huge intersect circle. The design is cluttered, but in a good way. Ten out of ten. 
Okay, image description. A version of the progress pride flag with a large purple intersect a circle over an outline in gold, looping through uh, uh, the pink, blue, uh, brown, and black egg chevrons on the side, which have a base of white. The trans and people of a color are, are part. The horizontal stripes are pink, red, orange, yellow, green, light, blue, dark blue, and purple. It's happening. The morphing into Ohio. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. Oh yeah, it's all Ohio. No, please, can we not make fun of the flag? Dang. Wait, it's all Ohio? Always has been. No. Wait, it's all Ohio? Always has been. Wait, I don't get it. Girl, that's a original image. We've come full circle. It's always just been the, the state of Ohio. Okay, but I'm going to say this right now. The right has not always been the state of Ohio. I don't think. I need to read on history, but I think Pride started in um, Stonewall. Which was New York, I think. Could you imagine if people talked about Catholicism the same way they talked about, like, indigenous people's religions? Girl in horror movie holding a Bible open. According to legend, a mob tortured a half-man, half-god, and nailed him to a wooden cross. Leaving him to starve to death. But days later, on this very night, they found he had clawed his way out of the grave. Now those who believe lie in a way for him to rise again. To honor him, they have weekly gatherings where they chant and sing. And at the end of it, they eat his flesh and blood. Wow, that's so creepy. It's only a myth, don't worry. I love that this is insinuating that Jesus is going to try to kill these kids. Mother. Now eat your vegetables, honey, so you can grow up big and strong. Woke son. I don't want to grow up big and strong. I want to be a twink. I mean... Okay. No, the JD and JD Vance does not stand for Jorkin the in us. And I'm pronouncing that on purpose. Purposefully e e pronouncing it incorrectly. Maybe if we meme hard enough. He will have to make a public statement about, about how his name is not Jorgen the Penis. This causing the general public to become aware of it and destroying any shred of hope he has left. Yeah, we should keep on, on memeing on him. <laughs> Unrestrained summer fun. Oh my goodness. Crazy tiger screeching noises. Look at the horseshoe crab just. If Mario was trapped in a cave for generations, he would gradually become pale and lose his eyes and start hunting for fish and centipedes by sonar. But he wouldn't lose his overalls or hat. What? Why? The grinning goop. Oh my goodness, it's a frog. I am looking for people who are willing to, who are interested in turning $100 to $5,000. This is not a pyramid scream or crypto or NFT project. We will be selling illegal substances. 
Oh, thank goodness, a reputable profession. And I must add that I do not condone this. Don't sell things like that. Cool? Cool. On one hand, I get that the push to move out is driven like by like nuclear family e values, but like also 90% of people I meet who are unhappy would have most of their problems fixed by simply no longer living with their parents. It's made me very pro moving out. If you're feeling stifled, controlled, or constantly anxious, I think you should start working on moving the freak out. I remember or being 19 and being like, the drive to move out is so Western, it's important to stay with the family for my own finances and for the connection it brings. And literally, as soon as I moved out, it was like, oh, so this is what it's like to not feel constantly suffocate and hate my parents. And still, I meet really sheltering just people who just haven't reached realization that it feels like heaven to walk out of your room and have nobody breathing down your neck. Yeah, it'd be nice to have that feeling during the daytime. <sighs> the world isn't kind. Okay, much more importantly, are you? The world is a kind. Skill issue, I am. Le That's so real. That's so legit. No. The mystery machine. Jinkies. Zoinks. Jeepers, rut row. Fred stands in silence for he has no catchphrase. Indeed. Oh God. That's gonna be a long one. That's gonna be a hard one. Why? Okay, we need to find a short one to end the video on. Okay, we can end on that at one. Oh gosh. We have three massive posts now. So, I got called into jury duty, and I was put in seat instantly. Of course, I said, Your Honor, I can't be a juror on a two-week trial. I have offer rehearsal. And she said, Opera, huh? Well, sing for us. And I did, in a federal court of law. In front of the judge, 75 jurors, the lawyers, and the freaking defendant. I sang O Mio O Babino O Caro, and the judge excused me. Things that happened? This. Yo, I didn't and embarrass myself in federal court so y'all could and doubt me. The above noted an individual attended court as a juror on the following days, Monday, September 24, 2018. Attendance fee $50 per, per day. No, jurors who are, are federal government employees but may not be entitled to receive attendance fees but will receive a mileage allowance. Okay, so. It's what that says that you did this. I know a lot of opera singers, and seeing a full on area in a courtroom with only a hint of provocation is exactly what they would do.
Very real. I know a lot of the judges, and demanding an improv to offer a solo on a whim is also something they would do. And also one of the main reasons you could be excused for trade duty is an economic hardship. Basically, it would cause you unreasonable financial damage. If you're a professional singer, a two-week gap in your rehearsal schedule could do that for sure. As a muso, I think that's how you say it. I absolutely believe this. I've got my accordion out of my carry-on and play a tune with effort security couldn't recognize its weird massive levers. Singers and musicians are just like that. Accurate. Did it really just end on a one-word post that says accurate? I opened a whole new tab to read this in a way that I can see without messing up my whole entire tracking. And the post ended on a single word. Like sure there was a lot before that, but that last part wasn't necessary. I was probably going to say that. Anyway. Stop naming your babies Olivia. If you are con considering it, think again. Please learn from my tragic childhood where I was never the only Olivia anywhere I went. I was always Olivia with an initial. There were six Olivias in my graduating class of 165 people. I went to summer camp and then the seven person tech crew for a musical. There were four Olivias. I was born in 1998, when Olivia was only the 21st popular name in the United States. Since 2001, it's been in the top 10 names for new babies. That's 23 years of Olivia's going through my same problem, if not worse, considering Olivia has been the number one baby girl's name since 2019. Five, fifteen thousand, two hundred and seventy new Olivias were born in twenty twenty three alone. One time, I was sitting on the corner waiting to cross the street with four other people who I did not know. My roommates drove by and hugged the girl. I what? Hang on. My roommates drove by and honked the horn and yelled, Hey, Olivia! The girl sitting next to me said to her friend, That's so weird. I have no idea who those people were. I turned to her and said, My name is Olivia too. They were talking to me. So on this random street corner in Boston, I wasn't even the only Olivia. Yeah, if I'm thinking of Olivia, I might just change my mind and just go with Olive instead. I also like Adventure Time a lot, though. This post is gonna hurt. Stuff that actually happens in Pokemon. A giant castle rises from the ground around the main government building. This is basically PETA's fault. You ride a dragon god into space to fight a meteor alien. This is plan B. Plan A was to send the meteor alien to another dimension. One guy tries to get rid of the oceans. One tries to get rid of dry land. What happens next will shock you. Oh yeah, I played the one where they try to get rid of the oceans. They, um... Someone of Pokemon that I forgot the name of. A dude drops straight off the water onto an evil pirate, lowers the gangplank, then swims off to let a teenager deal with it. There is a 1 in 3 chance that a runaway 11 year old Yakuza slash Mafia Prince broke into a laboratory to steal an adorable plant creature. Team Rocket? 
You could buy a useless fish for several thousand yen from a shady salesman. This is actually a very good investment. Oh, so someone actually sells you Magikarp. The devil, the god of death, and the bringer of eternal nightmares all really, really, really like cake. The space cultist would have won if Dragon Lucifer had shown up. God is a goat, and if you take it to the right place, it will make you a baby god. The most powerful trader in the world, a 14 year old with a pet rat, went up a frozen mountain for no apparent reason. He only comes down after you beat up his rat. This is absurdly difficult. The effective ruler of the Unova region is a magical cat girl or space princess with a bunch of pet dragons. There's a 9 foot tall guy wandering around. His height is the least interesting thing about him, and his best friend is a flower fairy. Oh yeah, wasn't he like a mortal or something? More. A 10 year old destroys the Yakuza, and another 10 year old destroys its remnants a few years later! There's multiple professors who study subjects they have no freaking clue about. They're still considered experts for some reason. Bikes cost a gajillion dollars, but you actually were the millionth customer and get one for free anyways. A WOC woman of color orphan gets a suit that basically makes her a superhero. And this is never followed up on. That sucks. A random guy with a bad accent and a brown trench coat is the sole police officer seen in the series. No, I mean literally. There are no other police. It's just him. Hey, what about the police from the Pokemon on, on TV show that I think might be canon? Others you might think were police are just security guards. Same police officer fights a Pokemon with his fists at one point. Okay, now, isn't it isn't that against the law in the Pokemon series? In a previous game, a dragon hits a person with a laser, and this is a good thing. Psychic powers are totally real and common as dirt. Yeah, I've run into ooh, ooh, a lot of psychics in the Pokemon. And, and Pokemon in general. Ghosts are real too, but they're mostly goobers. I love them. Fossils are resurrected. Our Jurassic Park all the time. Actually, funny enough, um, in the Violet, and, well, actually in Scarlet, there are exclusive, there are actual walking, lit, reanimated, well, pulled from the past versions of uh, current Pokemon, including Koridon, which is the legendary that's on the e cover. People can read dreams. Teleportation and matter to energy conversion is so commonplace it's used for minor conveniences or for dungeon puzzles. An ancient civilization 10,000 years old used Braille as their alphabet. You could visit the underworld. There's now another police officer. He's next to 
He lives next to a town overrun by a gang with his 15 cats. Pokemon Heritage. It's post. A princess who's never bowed in her life moves to another country after she unlocks latent psychic powers and becomes one of that country's top battlers. To follow up on the orphan superhero, she's also like 10 years old and a professional PI in Paris. I still have no idea who this is. Like legitimately, I don't know if I played this game that they're talking about uh, with the e orphan superhero. A pair of self-proclaimed celebrities that no one's heard of try to rewrite history by driving a dog insane. I'd need context. You have the power to alter the past by choosing where to plant carrots. Three specific birds change their appearance and types when in the UK. This is never elaborated on. Which game is the UK? Between a respected sports champion, a renowned professor, and a terrorist cult leader, the cult leader is the one whose ancestor or never betrays you. What? A region's top champion who's known for never holding back loses to two teenagers on separate occasions and is still considered the top champion for some reason. Pokemon. Actually, the orphan superhero O slash PI in Paris is 16, not 10. This is notable because she's one of the few characters in this series who has a specified age. The leader of the space cultists is 27 and no one of the and, and is one of the adamants of the crazy more land geologist. Oh god, you're talking about wait no. Wait, maybe. Wait, I'm confused. They it, it described it just vague enough for me to actually not know what the heck they are talking about with some of these. Or I just didn't play or or I forgot these games. Okay, how to track it down. It's from the Reeves Tale, and it's a description of a 20-year-old young woman. This wench thick and well grown wise with Camus nose and yen gray as glass. With the broad and breasts rounded and high. But right fair was ere I will I'll not lie. In modern English, had to look at me, so that's as good as my source, but I know the rest. This wench was was thick and well grown, with a pug nose and, and eyes gray as glass, with buttocks broad and breasts round and high, but right fair was her hair, I will not lie. The fact that Chaucer had big butt and I will not lie with the two lines of each other is causing me disproportionate and amusement. Also the fact that this wet and stick works equally well in Middle English and in Modern and Slang. Oh my god. I can't end on that. Allergies. Developing allergies as an adult is so weird because you're just going about your life assuming you've got the basis of existing in a corporeal form Figured out, and suddenly it just... What the heck? Why am I on fire? Never mind, it turned out I just inhaled it. Cyan pepper. False alarm. Update. Guess who's allergic to cyan pepper? This post. I... Yeah. Suddenly finding out, out I have lactose intolerance was torture. And it still kind of is. <laughs> Wait, that was r slash tumblr. If you liked this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Why did I forget my outro? I have no idea what I'm going to do tomorrow, so until then, 
Goodbye.